What is good? We're back. Got a little big co-sighting. What up, Bo? How you doing? What's up, man? What's up? Oh, not much. Excited, doing. excited to be here. Yeah, yeah. Doing Combine good. wrapped up. We're going to mm-hmm. get some draft action soon. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to be off and rolling. We got a lot of answers. I feel like up. we're right in the middle of football season. That's <laughs> the best. We are right. I'm checking, checking for my alerts and... You know, looking obviously uh, the tag day and everything else, but uh, there's the combine and the what kind of new trade talk do we have? What quarterback might be going where? It's it's, it's fun. Let's roll. Yeah. We're what what fifty days from the draft? I think I saw today. Yeah, I believe mm-hmm. that is. I believe that's the number. Yep, it'll be here before you know it. Um, fifty so, sleeps. Fifty, 50 sleeps. sleeps. We got ourselves a NFL draft. Yeah, man, I'm excited. All right, so today we got a little. Uh, have a fun little discussion about some some mocks that we've been doing and just some general things that you know you got to stop doing this right now like stop watching other fantasy guys making stop doing this right now videos right right now that's a good that's a good title you could take it any direction you want um got something that i've we have i've been talking to you on the phone about haven't been here a lot lately i showed up a week ago for the first time in four months or whatever got a new baby at the house so definitely been away but i got some things i've been working on and talking to through on the phone with you and i thought you know to jay wayne on the ones and twos over there he keeps us straight and he was showing these uh, he had this title he's like hey we need to do a stop doing this video and i was like i got one boom i got one let's do it let's do it stop stop doing this right now stop doing this (laughs) so i think the short story and the fastest way to get it out from me is for the last twenty years plus, best player available has been. That's the way. You, that's the way you can kind of BPA go at it. baby. BPA best player available. You gotta stop doing this. Oh, we need stop a, doing an um, uh, addendum to the uh, stop doing BPA. best player available. If we want to go right with the the title of the movie here, the title of the video, let's just transition it to best asset available. Some people are going, yeah, yeah, I was doing that all along, mm-hmm. and this that's what I've been thinking. I didn't, you know, that's what I've been trying to do. That's. I've kind of been transitioning this direction in the last year or two, and I didn't know. I think last year, startup season, I was talking about assets and this and that, but I just didn't use a cool phrase like that. Best asset available. Bah. Replacing. <laughs> replacing best player available. So, I, you know, I was going to get a little, let's get a catchphrase to it now. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I was. You could just go ahead and goad it right was, now. Right, right. I was dancing or goad it. I was dancing around it last year and just saying hey in my startups i'm comfortable taking a team that i think i can go into the trenches and trade around with which you know to each his own i'm not saying that you need to draft a team just to say hey when i get done i gotta make trades no matter what i gotta trade all over the place because you might not have a ton of trade partners in your league but you're or you might just not we talked about it on the last show that you and i did together you might not want to put in the time to get good deals done because it takes time it to, does to, take to time get to get the right deals it, done. It does. It, it does, and it can. There's a something going around right now. It's kind of on the mainstream of, you know, hey, let's. I can buy my running back later. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> who started that two years ago? <laughs> Me and you, Bubba. Well, anyway, it finally hit the mainstream streets, and our, our, you know, everybody's talking about. Well, let me let me build my team out, and I'll get my running back later. That's becoming very very popular now. Good thing it's still good to be a trendsetter. Yeah, I mean, um, so we're doing again with the buy. Pretty soon it's going to be buy everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. There's different types of players that we. If you have any experience, you'll know what I'm talking about. And if you don't, come learn and grow with us. <laughs> There's different players at different times in the season that are easier to trade for. Mm-hmm. We all know that somebody, a, a running back that is attainable midseason is always out there. You just got to look at the bottom half of the league. Mm-hmm. And I don't know which running back is going to be, but you can get them. But on the stop doing this list, it's just, you know, don't say, hey, I got to get the best player. And there's a couple players I want to talk about that are that roll together at the end of the draft, not end of the draft, but, you know, 10, 10th round, 9th, 10th round. You got your Mike Evans. You got your Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Mike Evans. Those three guys are kind of usually knotted together in these mocks that we've been looking at. And that's the definite, like, when I was telling you this the other day on the phone, I was kind of bringing this out and actually putting it out and figuring out how I wanted to say it. The Mike Williams and the Mike Evans are the definition of best player available at a certain point in the draft. Mike Williams is going to be the best football player in your draft at some point 
he's going to be on the top of the list or a couple names down, but you're like, dang, Mike Williams can ball. And he's, you and I know from experience when you're trying to trade him this past season in a team, in a team, we're going to like, Hey, let's rebuild this guy. You can't get anything from Mike Williams. He might be in that five, six game stretch where he's crushing and healthy. You might catch somebody at the right time. But what I'm trying to say is when you select Mike Williams in your dynasty startup this year, and you're like, Mike Williams is by far the best player on the, on the, you know, the best football player on my map right here on this list of players and the tight end premium, Mike Williams gets selected at eight. This is just a mock. This is one, one draft board that we're grabbing right now. I'm just looking at one mock draft board. And of course, every draft is different. Every mock is different. These numbers are fluid, but let's just say at eight ten in this mock in the eighth round towards the end of the eighth round, Mike Williams gets picked. Well, towards the end of the ninth round. So you got almost a full round goes by, an asset, a dynasty asset. This is a tight end premium mock. Mm-hmm. Evan Ingram goes at nine ten, right? Evan Ingram, of course, this is new information. This mock just this didn't happen before this, but Evan Ingram gets the tag from Jacksonville. They need a minute to figure it out with hopes to get some type of long term deal figured out. Maybe they get it done by July. Maybe they don't. But you just saw the breakout season from Evan Ingram, the re breakout because he broke out as a rookie. Right, he took some time off for a few years. Because that's what happens, especially with young tight ends. The breakout with the uh, corresponding ascension of uh, Trevor. Trevor. So Trevor breaks out, gets out from under the Urban Meyer shadow. Mm-hmm. Tight end friendly, you know, offense, coaching staff, schemes, everything. They were just hitting Evan Ingram on crossers. Like tight ends can't keep up with him. Right. All I mean, day long. Just we've, cr- we've known that he's an asset. He just was hurt and did some had some bad drops hurt bad Good drops player. did he get the scheme that he needed did he get the looks did he get the plays drawn up for him? maybe not but you take a, a mike evans that all the all three the reason i bring all three of those guys go before him. mike williams went first at 8 10 but then you turn the corner at 9 2 9 3 it was mike williams keenan allen mike evans Mike Williams and Keenan Mike Evans actually went to the same team and there's nothing this dude didn't have a tight end yet and he may hit a tight end he may hit one, something out of the park later in the draft but and he's kind of chasing chasing wide receivers because he just had a couple at the top and then he went running back and quarterback for a while chasing wide receivers but and it's that when I say this dude it's my boy J Mike mm-hmm. so J Mike probably he could definitely win the championship with this team anybody can win the championship any given year these days uh, it could happen. I'm not picking on my buddy J. Mike, but I'm going to pick on him because I know he won't care. But you took two guys right here because the same team took Mike Williams and Mike Evans. And in the middle of that, Keenan Allen goes, in the season when Evan Ingram's doing his thing, when we come back around, Evan Ingram gets hot last year. Trevor Lawrence gets hot last year. Obviously, you got Calvin Ridley coming back. But right. you could see what the Jags were doing with Ingram. They tag him. Pay him decent money. Don't let him go anywhere. And why wouldn't you want to keep all the weapons around Trevor? Mm. Right? So you, you've Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, Mike Evans, just three solid Mike Evans. Mike Williams, not as, as old as Evans and Keenan Allen, obviously, but three solid statesmen, elder statesmen in the league, especially Allen and Mike Evans, who have been Keenan Allen, Mike Evans have been staples in the top 12 top 20 wide receivers yeah for years now mike evans never been under a thousand yards when the season starts you're not going to be able to come close to getting evan ingram in a tight end premium league for one of those guys maybe mike williams comes back healthy and he's crushing with herbert i hope so i love watching mike williams play he's fun i can tell you from experience you can't get much from him and the people got that he's always hurt stigma Mm -hmm. and keenan allen had that for a few years and then he broke out of that and had five straight years of being ridiculous, didn't miss a game, you know. But now he's, what, is he 31 now, you know? Yeah. 30, maybe may 31 before we start playing football. I don't know. And I'm not saying, you know, Evan Ingram's 23 anymore. He's 28. But if the tight end position is where, you know, it's a tight end premium league. Stop doing this. Stop, stop forgetting this guy doesn't have a tight end yet. Stop forgetting that you're going to need a decent tight end in a tight end premium league. You need a decent tight end anyway, but it's hard to find them, mm-hmm. right? So, not that there's nothing wrong with taking Mike Williams and Mike Evans and Keenan Allen. There's just better assets on the board at the time when those guys were selected. And you can always go back, you know, 
Wide receivers are easy to find. Sure, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, A.J. Brown, C.D. Lamb, Jalen Waddle. Those guys aren't easy to find. But there's a lot of sameness in wide receiver 24 to wide receiver 48. You can there be certainly moving, can be, you yeah. know, you can you can be moving around those guys fairly easy, but you get your hands on a on a tight end that scores, and you know, yeah, and I don't I don't know, and maybe Evan Ingram will be fine adding Calvin Ridley. I don't know if Evan Ingram's the without Calvin Ridley that it does make me a little nervous, but the idea more is the, of the yeah, I just I just picked, I just right. picked Evan Ingram because right, right. he he got sniped right in front of me. I just picked Evan Ingram because it was a tight end. This team didn't right, have right, a tight end. If you had Dallas Goddard two rounds before, I would have picked somebody else. I'm just saying best asset available versus best player. Mm-hmm. Most of the times when Mike Evans gets picked in a dynasty startup now, it's been like that for two years now, he's going to be on the top of the list and he's been there for two rounds. Right. He's going to be on the top of the list in the sixth round as far as like what the computer generates is what the quality of the player and if you're doing live updated ADP, he'll drop down some, but he'll still be at the top of the list before he gets picked. You know how everybody, you know, somebody get like the all the younger wide receivers, they're farther down the list underneath the veterans and in a dynasty startup by the time you get out of the first 15 picks, now all of a sudden people go to the bottom. They, right, they right. scroll down a little bit and start picking people. Sure. Scroll down a little bit, start picking people. And then those guys stick around. Mike, Mike Evans will be at the top of the list. Keenan Allen probably at the very top of the list on the players available when he's picked. And he's probably the best player, not so, the best So asset. what do you think about, you know, on this particular team or who's ever building? Like, you know, he, he picked two guys he's hoping to just for sure get solid points from week in, week out to help him win. How much, you know, how much weight do you put on that for basically not maybe swallowing the pill of, taking best asset available and more so shooting for for sure points in your lineup rather than maybe points and upside he's got cooper cup and jamar chase right so if cup is healthy you you do have to hinge cooper cup and and uh matthew stafford here together you got cooper cup went out with an injury coming back this year well paid would guaranteed money so it's not like he's not going to have the the ability and the targets when he's on the field Matt Stafford, probably, if he comes back and plays a couple more years and his neck is okay, probably one of the best dynasty super flex buys on the market right now. But he went from a late second, mid-third, late third startup pick last year. Stafford coming off of a Super Bowl win. Oh, my God, look at him. He went from the Lions to the Rams offense, and he's the best thing ever now. And now he's down here at the end of the ninth round, tenth round, because he got a bad neck maybe. And he, there was rumors of retirement. You know, yeah. I mean, he's only thirty. He's only thirty-five. You know, these days you can play to fifty if you want. Yeah, as um, long as he's healthy. If he's healthy, he could be awesome. I, that, as far as like, I guess to answer your question, I can settle. I'm I'm probably going to be looking for quarterbacks, tight ends, and running backs in that position of the draft. Now, you're right. You're right there with. Uh, I like. I like Cortland Sutton around later. You don't probably get as much guaranteed production out of Cortland Sutton, but what could happen with the revamp of the Broncos offense with the new, you know, with Sean Payton showing up and what Russell Wilson may be able to put back together. I like a really late Juju, um, especially if he goes back to the Chiefs because now all of a sudden everybody hates Juju. Mm -hmm. And I got, I I like a really late Juju. Um, (laughs) There's probably, there's that line in the sand of where Mike Evans and Keenan Allen were taken and, you start to, and then a little bit later, obviously Hopkins as well in that conversation. Um, you know, Hopkins just being the same age as those guys. He's probably been a tier above those guys anytime he's been on the field. And I, I would, yeah. If, if, I'm, if I'm going to take Evans, I'm taking Nuke. Completely. That was where I was getting at. I'm, if I'm taking Mike Evans, I would just rather I would take Nuke instead. No doubt, Nuke is definitely at this point more explosive than Mike Evans for sure. Mike Evans, low touchdown total this year, and and three and seventy five seventy five percent of his touchdowns were in one game at the very end and didn't help you at all unless you were in a super you know best ball format right so i i I agree with pretty much what you're saying there are some certain builds where i will say like you know i feel like once you put cup on the team and you kind of got christian mccaffrey up there i just don't want to load up i don't want to cut you i don't want to load up with more depreciating assets right at least i i I mentioned last time we were talking there was uh but you got to push it you got to push your chips in for guys who who you feel good about scoring points right on the bottom of your lineup or basically i guess it's really the the question of which is the way i look at it for the most part and the way that you're looking at it for the most part you're not going out there and you don't and I've, i see other people say this too it's not like a, anybody created it but you're not going from here to starting 
to having to make roster decisions right. of who you're starting. You right. Know, well, you, I, you, I, yes, but my point exactly in the eighth and the ninth round, you this my buddy J. Mike throws Mike Williams and Mike Evans on his team obviously depreciating assets mike williams is not nearly as old as he gets credit for because he's only 28 but he's you know the lack of him being on the field sometimes makes him feel older but it that was in eight and nine he took josh downs and brian robinson at 10 11 i I have no problems with those picks especially in the 11th round brian robinson i like that but that being said you're talking about putting points on your team tyler lockett's still out there Donovan People Jones not not nearly as guaranteed points, but a nice high upside player. But Tyler Lockett's on the board still. Well, he's gonna be on the board, and so is Brandon Cooks. That's what I'm saying. Tyler Lockett is still on the board, and you could easily sub him out for the Mike Evans at three rounds ago, and you could just take out Mike Evans and put in your Kadarius Tony, a super high upside play with a lot of volatility there. You could put in your David Njoku there. You could grab your, you know, you're t- you're talking about putting points in your lineup. You could take a Darren Waller. And put a tight end in your lineup instead of uh, there's just up you know I, Tyler Lockett's one of them Joe Cubby Myers we don't to, to be determined where he's playing um, you know there's still just there's still wide receiver point. Brandon Cooks is down there I love the Chase Claypool redraft uh, or restarted his you know draft capital if you will and none of these guys necessarily you know probably is plug and play as Mike Evans but who's Mike Evans quarterback? The best player available versus the best asset available is what we started with. Mm-hmm. Stop doing this. Stop taking best player available and take best asset available in your dynasty builds because, yes, it is now that it's mainstream and we're not just leading the pack here anymore. The pack's catching up to us. <laughs> you don't have to start with week one right after your startup. And if you do, man, this st- you literally – we're drafting a dynasty team. So, obviously, I'd love to win the championship the first year, but let's play, play – uh, d- other than last year's offensive play call defensive guy, let's pl- play it like Bill Belichick. What if it takes me two, three, four weeks to figure out my starting lineup? Right. I don't care. I'm I'm starting a dynasty team. Like, especially if you think about it in the format of, I'm not saying I'm going to just take all 22 year old players, but if I set it up where I got a nice stud, especially in super flex, I'm going to, and when I talked about this and go back and listen to last week's pod, I'm not, you know, you get a nice built out quarterback room where it's hard to build out a quarterback room where you're taking a couple of quarterbacks here or there, or maybe you just got lucky and you got Justin Fields and Dak Prescott to get started to, you know, this dude got fields at one nine and Dak Prescott at two, four. I love that start. You got a couple of decent quarterbacks. You got a couple of decent receivers. You got yourself a tight end and maybe you got a decent running back or two. I hope you do. But if you didn't like it's in, in my case, I, this is not exactly the team that I would take if if I had money on this league. This is a mock, but in my in this case right here, just follow me here because I don't have. Well, I got well, one running me, back. Hang on one second. I'll throw another. Stop doing this. Stop mock drafting like you exactly like you would draft your team. You need to be experimenting and doing different things. So right. th- that's kind of what you were alluding to there with this team is that you're kind of experimenting, doing different things, not taking all the players that you would normally take. Well, this is so a mock. I just threw a, a, yeah. another one in there for you. This, Boom. This is a mock draft. Stop doing this. Yeah, <laughs> mock drafting like you. Well, there's nothing. Do it sometimes, though. To every see every how, once in a while, sure. You mock, gotta, mock, how you, mock how you really want to do it because there's no reason not to practice how you really want to do it. But because I practiced it a couple times how I really wanted to do it, this mock right here was I'm not taking the players. I like to players. push the envelopes in most of them. Well, I, w- I wasn't going to take the Daniel Jones, Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, Geno Smith, right. you know, Derek Carr quarterbacks this time because i wanted to see where they would fall because i literally we did a podcast last week on take them you know right. take them and take them heavy so this in this mock draft i got the one two so i knew that the five eleven and six two turn i'm gonna be taking quarterbacks mm-hmm. well not on this team though because i did it last two or three mocks so i wanted to mix it up and so not that i wouldn't take jalen waddle and drake london we had the third round reversal so i had to two eleven i got josh allen to start with feels great obviously the Josh Allen I took with Jalen Waddle, Drake London. I got no problem with that. Two young stud receivers that pushed zero pressure on me to do anything. I have zero pressure sure. after those first three picks. The fourth round, if gun to my head, I'm probably not necessarily taking Trey Lance there. But again, I didn't want to not take a quarterback in that spot. I didn't I didn't really like the value on any of the running backs. Six round Richardson went away pretty quick, huh? That's gone. <laughs> That's gone. G- gun to my head, money on the line. I would have taken Anthony Richardson at three eleven just to put him on my team. Uh-huh. And I wanted to see how far he would fall. He got taken in the turn right there at three twelve, four one. So 
it's just interesting yeah. how you know that's I he's jumped hot. two round. He hot. He's hot. Best broad jump ever. He's hot. So I took Trey Lance at four two just to put a pink you know quarterback spot on the team. I didn't want to let it run because I knew that I wasn't taking quarterbacks the next couple rounds because those quarterbacks I wanted to see where they would fall. And I knew that it wasn't like, hey, let me see where Trey Lance is going to fall because I knew he'd go off soon enough. So it wasn't like I was trying to figure out how far he would go. I wanted to see how far Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, et cetera, would fall. So I got Trey Lance. But follow me again with where I'm headed with. If I keep this, if this was a real team, I'm lining up for actually a pretty decent next year's first round draft pick Mm -hmm. because my team might not. I don't have any running backs. So that's a really good way to build a team that can win slash not win because I don't have any running backs. So you can't, you're not definitely not winning championships without a good, I mean, I, I'm going to get my Jamal Williams later. The teams to be filled out. I got, I got, there's plenty of running backs I can grab that I can throw in there and take shots on. But right this second, I like my Antonio Gibson super late. I like my Elijah Mitchell super late. Kareem Hunt's a dark horse could be a stud if he ends up in the right situation if he moves around at all you know there's a couple of late round rookies i could take seven running backs in a row here coming up if i want to Mm -hmm. um so i got the trey lance at four two took um jameson williams and and pickens back to back love that again i would probably be taking quarterbacks there um and maybe see one of those and then i get christian kirk and amari cooper um bang bang and the thought there is if that was my real team I don't need anything out of Jamison Williams and George Pickens next year, per se. I and I mean I don't know if London's going to be startable if he can't get a quarterback that throw him the ball, but he was nothing but great when he got a target last year. So you got Waddle, London, Jamison Williams, Pickens. So you got a really good, fun, stu- studded out core, high upside wide receiver. And then I follow it up with Christian Kirk, who was a top 12 wide receiver last year, mm-hmm. and then Amari Cooper. So I can immediately put two out of three of those other guys on the bench and wait. Right. So now out of those six wide receivers right there, I might not, quote unquote, need a wide receiver for two or three years. Obviously, fantasy is a fun game and it'll it'll stab you right in the back. So I might need wide receivers by week three. But you could look at that on paper and be like, my wide receivers are set for a while. And, you know, because Amari Cooper is my oldest wide receiver and Christian Kirk's my second oldest wide receiver. Then I follow it up with a Matt Stafford 9-11 grab, 10-2 Waller every day, all day. I'd be taking, sure. I'd be taking Waller in that round if I had – I, I could have easily gone Evan Ingram at 9-10, Waller at 10-2, bang, bang, back-to-back, back, call it a day. Yeah. Um, and I got some – you know, that's sure there's plenty of tight ends later in the draft that would be fun to have on my team. And Aaron Jones comes to me at 11-11, which feels like I'm stealing. Oh, for sure. I I, you know? I let Aaron Jones go a couple of times. Me too. Draft. I almost took him in Waller's spot, but I was like, I got. I would just rather have the at- – literally, best asset. I wanted Aaron Jones at 11-11, at 10-2, but I was like, I think Darren Waller's a better asset. Let me take Darren Waller. and work. I still didn't even have a running back, So, but instead of panicking, mm-hmm. I was like, I'm going to take Waller here, and nobody else for some reason uh, – AJ Dillon goes before Aaron Jones. I get it. He's younger. So, but I got Aaron Jones. Immediately changes my outlook on my next season. Prior, prior, just like that, I'd given up. If I if I I love my young wide wide receivers, and I got young ish. I got Trey Lance and Josh Allen. So I got young ish quarterbacks. Matt Stafford's a you know a dart throw could be a stud for a few years. Doesn't necessarily have to help me win this year, but I could trade him. But then all of a sudden I got Aaron Jones. Yeah. Boom. Now, oh, whoa, I could win. I could win this year. Yeah. I wasn't winning this year. Boom, I could win this year. And there's a plenty, you know, we're in the 12th round now. I got plenty of picks. You know, of course, you know, it's a mock, so it's going to stop in the 15th. But filling this thing out, there's so many good players left. I, I got, I could take this thing a million different directions from here. Best asset available was Waller. I needed a running back. I took Waller. Uh, to me, Stafford, at that when I, when I took Stafford, it didn't feel fantastic. Mm-hmm. It didn't feel great. But I was like, man, why why can't he come back and be a top fifteen, top twenty quarterback? As long as he can actually get on the field, like that's a val- that's a great pick. Mm-hmm. He's going to be just fine. I, I, now the Rams are obviously going in a different direction of where you necessarily mm-hmm. want him to go. But mm-hmm. Cooper Cup's necessarily probably going to be around. They can get another receiver and, and Stafford. If they can keep him upright and he's healthy, he'll, sure. he'll be fine. He'll be well worth what you invested him at 9 well worth 11. It. And if, you know, this this league has become more and more fluid as we've seen it in the last couple of years, Stafford could be on another team next year. Yeah, or yeah, out of the they, league if he's hurt. Or out of the league, for, for real, sure. For but real. I'm saying, but, but if he's like healthy-ish and the Rams are like, you know what, um, we yeah. did trade, we got our Super Bowl. They're If they get, they, like over. you said, about to get rid of Ramsey, 
you know, yada, yada, yada. They're starting over. Maybe Stafford goes somewhere else. But so, so in, in, in talking about drafting, you know, Mike, don't draft Mike Williams and Mike Evans. And then you draft Cooper. What's the difference there? Uh, Deshaun Watson and I just see I see wide receiver one potential out of those guys. Right. And Cooper being 28 seems so much. Cooper at 28 feels light years younger than Keenan Allen. He just feels – I just – that's the way – that's a great question. I just – honestly, he just feels – I mean, he feels so much safer and more valuable than a Mike Williams. Mike I mean, Williams, I you know? agree. I think you the, the the quick short answer is is that Amari Cooper could be a wide receiver one. Yeah. And I don't think Mike Williams – and I mean, I think Mike Williams can have games. All right. And it's Mike there. Evans, there's a lot of questions who – if Tommy was still there, then sure, all day. I don't know what's going to happen to so, – not so much, but Amari Cooper and, and, and Deshaun had a little bit of, at times, had, had something rocking and rolling. And I think, you know, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you for the most part. Like, I'm, I, I liked kind of how you described it while you were saying it. But if somebody was watching and listening, I wanted to point it out. That's great. Great question. And I didn't think I didn't even put two and two together to, to connect those. Dots. I mean, to me, I don't know how much you write off um, Tom Brady's divorce preseason, you know, that whole like disruption of his football focus mm -hmm. to me, it just looked like Mike Evans getting slower and slower and slower. I mean, it's been, you know, six years on this podcast, six years ago on this podcast, when we first, first got started, I was like, Mike Evans is the biggest, baddest thing we got on, as walking around as a wide receiver out there. It was like the very first thing that came out of my mouth on a, on a, it was like the first wide he was wide receiver one in dynasty startups six years ago, you know, whatever yeah, it was, whatever number, yeah. you know, and, but like, now at 30 years old, 29, 30 years old, you know, 6'5", 230 pounds. I bet he's heavier than 230 pounds now. Uh, not, not, I bet Mike Evans is an awesome dude. I'm not hammering him. I bet he not, <laughs> I'm not saying he's sitting around eating McDonald's cheeseburgers all day. You know, I'm just saying right. like he's obviously in way better shape than I've ever been in my entire life. He just feels like he's getting slower and slow. It just is a decline. Yeah. Um, and again, he had, I think he had four touchdowns last year and three of them came at the very end of the season. I, I could be a little... I know that he had the three touchdown game at the end, but I don't know um, how many touchdowns he had before that, but it wasn't a lot. Yeah, he had three going into the last game of the year, and he had three more. So he had six, and he got half of them in the last game. So he was just, you know, he was killing you. He was literally killing you. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, Amari Cooper was wide receiver 10 last year with Brissett for most of the year. I mean, Evans was wide receiver 17, so seven, seven guys behind. And Mike Williams had a nice stretch there, but I'm sure – his numbers don't really matter because he wasn't out there a whole lot. Still wide receiver 32 in PPR, so. Sure. Um, well, he, he did, I mean, he had a couple big games, and he just had a couple games where it was yeah. not so great. Probably wasn't right out there, and then he got hurt right before the playoffs because they played him. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with, with the sentiment of bah instead of uh, BPA. <laughs> um, you know, going back to what I said when I lost my – you know, train of thought there. You got it back. You found the train. Yeah. Well, I was just talking about these older receivers. Like there are certain times and certain builds and the certain ways you're doing things like, you know, you slid Amari right in there, not really even thinking about kind of what you were talking about on the other end, but you had a clear difference of that. Amari Cooper can still be a wide receiver. One looked great. The Cowboys should, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. Why? Right. Like, you know, um, and Mike Williams is great in his own right. And Evans is own in his own right. You're not, it's hard to get anything for them. Anyway, Amari Cooper, kind of the same deal. It's hard to get something for him, but I think he could, he has a better chance of putting fantastic points on your board. Yeah. And I stuck um, him on a team with Waddle, London, Jameson Williams right, and right, Pickens. Right. Nobody on that, nobody in that, on right. those, in those fours is 24 years old. Right. Yet. You can kind of get you a, know. you can get a two, Two youngs to an old kind right, of deal. Right. I, yeah, I'm going four. You don't really have that many old guys. I so. got four young wide receivers and one. I, if gotcha. you want to call, if you want to call Maury Cooper old, and then I got the medium with Christian Kirk. So I got right. four young ones, a medium, and an old one. And then another young one. With but London. so what I was saying when I was picking on my buddy J. Mike, you know, he he's got a whole list of the best player availables, and I and I kind of picked on uh, Marco Mexico last week for doing that. I, you know, I picked on him about hammering home. He was the first, you know, he took the, um, 
he took the oldest running backs and he took the oldest receivers and he took you know and he, he was getting the win now team and I, that's why i was talking about i was like marco you went a little bit you went to win now because you if you're taking all of them you don't get the slip you're mm-hmm. not let how far does derrick henry fall how far does nick chubb fall how far do these guys fall they fall where they fall when they get taken who knows how far mike evans goes if he doesn't get drafted at nine three maybe he gets taken at nine four but you know but no hopkins like you said st- slides down to nine nine taking hopkins before evans but j mike takes starts off at 110 super flex you know you can't be upset with that jamar chase christian mccaffrey at two three i've been saying i for the last couple of years through the injuries coming back in the preseason every year i'm like i'm taking christian mccaffrey i'm taking christian mccaffrey and i still do want christian mccaffrey but i think right here in a super flex startup at two three christian mccaffrey that value that you just gave up there i think you'd be better off just trading back if that's what if that's the player you want to take you could just trade back end up with a Jonathan Taylor later or if you trade back then Christian McCaffrey might not be the one that gets picked you got Christian McCaffrey Brees Hall you know uh, Kenneth Walker Jonathan Taylor you got that top three or four guys that still seem very assetable don't be the one that takes the first one or if it's Brees take Brees Hall not you know, Christian McCaffrey being on the Niners now changes everything he could be a stud for four more years that's fine it's just you take him and then you took Cooper Cup at 3-3. The problem with Cooper Cup at 3-3 not being the best asset available is you took Cooper Cup. The biggest problem is Devontae Adams goes at 4-5. That's the biggest problem. The the Basically, the synonym for Cooper Cup is Devontae Adams, right? You took him a round plus, more than 12 picks difference in that, that selection. But you took Cooper Cup over Higgins, which is, you know, not really is – fun is like an Alave or a Drake London sounding like as far as dynasty Higgins is 24 years old he's an absolute stud tied to Joe Burrow maybe for the long term they say they want to keep him and they're not trading him but Higgins is a beast but you take Cooper Cup over Higgins Alave Drake London and even DK Metcalf if you want to throw it that direction but and then Devontae Adams goes around later that's just to me again it's a mock there's no trades I'm just you know playing playing the role here of the bad guy picking on my buddy but <laughs> you know and then so it's just complimentary draft picks is kind of the way i look at that it's like i you don't want to keep going like you got mccaffrey and cup yeah and then he comes back with a rookie running back gibbs who could be awesome or he could be not very startable for a year or two if he's in the wrong system mm-hmm. that so that could be an awesome pick or uh I didn't really get a lot of return on my investment for a year pick. So maybe your starting lineup isn't as great, but you've got McCaffrey and Chase and Cup, so your starting lineup's probably going to be fine. Then you come in with a Will Levis, who could turn into Josh, you know, Allen fairly easily, slash could be bust because he's a rookie quarterback and most of them are busts anyway. Yeah. Who knows? You know, you you it's hard for me to look at a team that gets started out with Christian McCaffrey and Cooper Cup. He did – circle the wagons and i'm proud of him he takes will levis but then comes back around with geno smith completely stabilizes with as funny as it sounds geno smith six round super flex startup whereas he was left for dead for seven years in a row geno smith gets paid stays with the seahawks stays in yeah. that ecosystem and the quarterbacks got pulled geno's been you know more like seven, seven eight, eight, nine. eight round rounder for and sure he, he got pulled up a little there so but that's just kind of the way this draft went the the, the quarterbacks got sucked up uh, a little tighter to to the body there um, right and so, so there's not much there's either it's feast or famine with age on his team because so he's because he's chasing quarterbacks because he got will levis as his first one so you got you that's that's you just got to write him down as a question mark you mm-hmm. can't even you put you take will levis you can't even assume he's in your <laughs> in your lineup for a while yeah hopefully he is he's i know he's going to be on some of my dynasty teams because i'm going to pick him in the rookie draft but then you go geno smith and you got aaron Rodgers. aaron Rodgers. Mr. Aloof himself, he may be, he may go to the Jets and crush it for a couple of years, like you said before we started, or he may be yeah. in and out. He may be out of this thing in a year. I, w- I he can't be. He's about to get a hundred million over the next two years. He's he's got to be playing. Yeah, he's got to be playing. And then that's and then that Aaron Rodgers is the seventh rounder. So then we'd start. Then it starts where where we started right. with the Mike Again, Williams, much higher than he's Mike been Williams, going. Mike Evans. I just. There's a lot, right. a lot of well, veterans on that team, so, aging veterans, and you could be in a, you could be in a pickle. So again, going back to, I didn't even get to it the last time I went uh, back in. You lost circle. the train of thought. Circle in the wagon. Get the train. You know, and it, it, to further push the narrative of uh, that, 
<laughs> best out of it. Best, asset, best asset, asset available for those just tuning in. Um, yeah, because you just come in mid <laughs> mid mid yeah. YouTube um, show. You know, you kind of touched on it for a second about buying an older running back from you know whoever. Like you can in, instead of taking, you know, I have no problem with you taking Christian McCaffrey and, and Cup. Me now either. now the way that I have to build my team changes a little bit. I'm I'm definitely going to take a few more safe assets while taking some some risk on. But, you know, I definitely want, you know, I, I would have, um, you know, probably not taken Gibbs there. But, you know, who, who knows? Or it doesn't matter. I guess what I'm saying is instead of taking Mike Evans, I guess you, I'm fine with taking Mike Williams or whatever. But, you know, you can you could just take whatever the better asset was and somebody somewhere is going to, you know, Jay Wayne could right next to him, Keenan Allen. He could have Keenan Allen on a team that is bottom six. He just wants he wants a pick and something else to move on. So you could instead of getting your veteran receivers right now and and plummeting your hope for hey I already have some older guys on my team you could get the younger asset and trade for the older asset in season right and for a second and and something else maybe for Keenan Allen in season to try to win because hey I'm or if it's going the other way then you know you you don't have to do anything with your you got you got an asset that isn't declining you got an asset that's either staying or or appreciating sure and I don't I don't again I obviously we're doing a mock but but yeah mock no trades it changes everything and I don't have a problem with the McCaffrey and the cup pick either I have a problem with where it's it was a third round reversal so you got cup at three three. That's the part where you know to me, you just you gave up some value. And you know, cup was the best wide receiver in football for two years when he was on the field. Just yeah. but targets like times two. Is yeah, what he was. Yeah, cup was. I mean, last year in the startup, I was like, man, you got to take cup if you're trying to win a championship. Dynasty is a tricky bitch, mm-hmm. and that's what. Again, if you've been doing this a while, a while, all of this stuff should be kind of making sense to you. Is like how slippery the slope is. It's not just older running backs, man. You get a, you get look. Just what happened with Stafford? One last year, second round pick. This year, tenth round pick. Look at yeah, you know, Diggs, Cup. fucking Diggs. Diggs was a second round pick all day for. He's a four three. Like I wouldn't That's, even, don't even look at Diggs. That, but you that, know? right, but I'm exactly so. Uh, and again, it's a mock, no trades. So yeah, put that up there in the sky. Forget it. Don't don't forget it. Leave it there. Cooper Cup at three three. Devontae Adams at four five. If this was a real draft, you just cannot give up that asset value of taking the 30 year old receiver at three, three, when there's another, there's three like Adams Diggs, they all get you close to about the same direction. Like your end goal there is just getting somebody in your lineup. That's crushing Diggs, Adams, obviously Tyreek Hill is a little bit young. He's, he's, you know, he's, but he's also we before could, that we couldn't trade Diggs either. We couldn't trade Mike Evans. We couldn't trade Diggs. That's what, I you, mean, we, you, we, no, my, not for what he was worth. We my were probably point getting a little is, greedy, but my point is that's, that's exactly my point. So it, you take Cooper cup at three, three Bryce Young's on the board. Anthony Richards is on the board. Nobody's giving you the one, 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 two, one, three, especially the one, one with Bijan, but you know what I mean? The one, two, one, three in a startup. I mean, in a, in a rookie draft, the one, two, nobody's giving you cup for that. Yeah. Or, or you're, you're not, you're not giving cup for that. I'm sorry. You're not you're not trading the pick for cup. Right. That's what I mean. That that's all that's when it comes down to it, you have to look at it in the values. You take cup at three three with Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, uh Stroud was already off the board by a couple of picks. Interesting, you know, Stroud, Young, flip them, Anthony Richardson right there, dice roll. Just saying Jamar Gibbs, one four, one five, one three, wherever, you know, in a rookie pick. You're not, nobody's given you the, that one, two, one, three rookie pick for Cooper cup. And you've selected him in front of those rookies here. Just trade back, just trade back. You can in the mock again, but just trade back. Devonte Adams, boom, four, five round and a half later. Right. You know, that you got the same thing that I got in Cooper cup. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've been doing a lot of this the last two years of drafting sort of this way. And just, you know, I don't, you know, I know people, best player available doesn't really get caught up in positions either, but I try not to get terribly caught up in positions. Obviously, the way things roll out, you know, in the draft and, and start taking shape, then it starts changing your idea of kind of what you were doing. If certain guys, you know, I, I didn't plan on taking Kenny Walker at 3-5. I had no, 
no plans on taking another running back. I took Brees at two five. I didn't plan on taking another running back here, mm-hmm. but Brees is at three five, or uh, Kenny Walker's at three five. What what am I? What's the guy supposed to do? Right. Um. You know, and I could have taken Olave. I guess. You, sure. If you you can have Olave over Kenneth Walker, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I wanted Kenneth Walker. I didn't think he would be there. I took him, and then in five five. I didn't want DeAndre Swift. I I had no plans of taking another running back. I already took Mm -hmm. Kenneth Walker. I didn't want anything to do with another running back right here. But at 5'5", all day. if you're going to give me DeAndre Swift, like I know everyone is now into saying how bad running backs think and don't even bother drafting them. And that's that's not what I'm saying at all. Uh, Right. We're not. That's not what you're saying either. It's not that, hey, I'm not I'll go into the season without a running back. I will. I but will. I'll also, but I. But I'll, I'll also, also do this. Yeah. I'll, I'll also, also have three awesome fucking young ones mm-hmm. to in the first five picks. That's fine. I don't want to. That's not necessarily my plan. But it was just that's what turned into best asset available. And again, you could argue semantics on Olave over Walker's. The wide receiver people are going to scream it's Olave. I still like Walker um, because of the scarcity of the position and, yeah. and how great that guy was off the rip. Um, last year um so you know you could say drake london over over kenny walker too but still i thought three five at kenneth walker was 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 really good value there so just basically value drafting at 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 points and and this one i probably took some quarterbacks and if i if this was an actual i ended up taking mac jones purdy and love back to back to back way earlier than i ever wanted to looks gross on paper I mean, I don't necessarily hate it just because of the way it panned out. And to me, I'm okay with any of those quarterbacks. I think I could elevate one of those to another quarterback with throwing 100%. some things in. But I, what I'm saying is, is I probably wouldn't have – I almost would have just completely punted on quarterback if this was a real draft for a lot of money. Like once once we got like, do I want Derek Carr at 6'8"? Not really. Um, you know, and that's what I would have had to do to get Derek Carr. I would have had to take – Derek Carr at six eight, right, um, and then I ended up taking, you know, Mac Jones. I don't want. I want to be able to take a positional player in the seventh round most times, mm-hmm. um, or well, or Jared Goff, uh, maybe taking a step up from Mac possibly. But like, I want to be able to take Hollywood Brown because the position players are still good there. Like Hollywood Brown's still there. Terry McLaurin's there. Jared Addison was there. Deontay Johnson was there. Christian Kirk, um, Pierce, uh, Charbonnet. Pollard could potentially be there. The, Dotson, there's just there's all sorts of other skill position. Now there comes a point where, yeah, I love getting Mac Jones in the ninth and tenth round mm-hmm. because it's now you're getting more to the oh, some of the older wide receivers getting pushed down and some more dart throw wide receivers. Right. It's like okay, now this is when the value to them makes sense. Mac Jones for Hollywood, I would take Hollywood ten times out of ten over Mac Jones. Um, well, but it, it but you can in a super flex. Yes, I can. Um, mm. I'm fine with that. Um, and Brandon Ayuk and, you know, Addison, like, you know, you're not, if Ad, if Addison's the one, five, one, six, nobody, like, you don't need to trade a first for Mac Jones. Well, that's part I, I, we're, and I'm trade Hollywood. T- we've probably been going seven. 20 minutes longer than we said we would. So I didn't say it, but like I, my, one of my next points was, you know, J- Addison is the one, six, one, seven in an ADP rookie draft. And and he's sitting there in the seventh round here in front of a bunch of pe- behind a bunch of people that you would not take for that one six one seven rookie pick, you know, mm-hmm. include like, you know, so and Mac Jones is probably one of them. But in a super flex, it's hard. You know, if, Mark, if Mac Jones is on the board in a rookie draft at one seven, I'm taking him. Mm, I'm, but uh, and when I say it looks terrible I'm on a paper, big Mac Jones fan too. When I say it looks terrible on paper, if Mac Jones, Purdy, and Love back to back to back, I'm saying everything you just said. I feel like it looks terrible because it started in the seventh round. But that's what you were forced to do with the quarterbacks right. in this draft. But in other mocks, you could have started that in the eighth or the ninth and right. gone, you know, nine, ten, eleven, bang, bang, bang. Because right. it was tenth round Purdy before we've talked about it. Ninth right. round Purdy, you know. Oh, like we said in the I said in the beginning, all the quarterbacks kind of got sucked up. Golf going in the sixth round, Daniel Jones six, and then you know Cousins six is kind of standard for him. But then Geno going in the sixth, Derek Carr then going into the sixth. All, all those all those quarterbacks are you know maybe Derek Carr and Cousins 
and Daniel Jones are in the six, but Goff and Geno make it another round, and Aaron Rodgers usually doesn't go. So all that quarterback list stays a little longer so people mm-hmm. don't feel as pressured to take a quarterback. Then you thumb over to that quarterback list, and that thing got shorter, and your queue got shorter, and all that shit, so it all got sucked up. So, yeah, right. no, I, I don't. Mac, I like Mac Jones because of the value of Mac Jones. I'm right. not, not, not going to overvalue him at one seven Ninth. and a rookie. But if I could get him for a two and a three, I'll trade that all day for Mac Jones. Of course, but you're not getting it. Oh, n- everyone hates Mac Jones. I don't think anybody likes Mac Jones. He's basically we. I think the ADP that I had for him with our four drafts was like nine eight. Like that's ridiculous. That's, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the guys that are going in that round are are second round picks. Like those are guys that you would trade twos for. Um, yeah, it's just the difference between a startup and a rookie draft. I, I'm, I'll, you've I'm just me. saying in general, like the, not the second round rookies. I'm saying like Kadarius Tony and DeAndre Hopkins and Keenan Allen. And, you know, those are guys that you would trade second round. You're not right. you're, nobody's giving you a first for those guys. Right. You could maybe hopefully get a second for. And that's where Mac Jones usually goes. Gotcha. So I'm saying the value of that round mm-hmm. starts to be around that area um, is more or less what I'm saying to to. to, to balance out mm-hmm. his value now as a quarterback so you could wait a little more on that but yeah you almost opened up another rabbit hole there <laughs> stop doing this stop don't once you get past a, a seventh or eighth round in a start like once you get past a spot in a d- dynasty startup where you have no these people aren't worth the first round rookie pick stop trading your rookie picks next year don't you know <laughs> stop doing this yeah and anyway, i'm not gonna start well that's for next time i'll get some good examples but you know i i, I didn't i didn't necessarily take best asset available there i just i kind of got pigeonholed and i I took all those guys a little you know a little little more elevated than i wanted to so that kind of that kind of stunk but it was kind of what it what it was to stay trying to stay afloat and competitive even though my team's you know well pretty young and and pretty fluid that's you yeah you got you got a couple of pink quarterback blots there in back to back to back but they also sit underneath justin jefferson jsn and burks for wide receivers and Brees hall walker and swift I mean, you could have you you could have the you do have the most potent running back. Yeah, and if in if, the in the league, if I could have got Hollywood in that place of Mac Jones right there, I I took Burks just because I, you know obviously hasn't done anything. We don't know what's going to be on Tennessee, but I mean, I just that's a big bad man, mm-hmm. and I, I I liked him last year, and he did enough for me to see on the field that there is a big bad man out there that can get it done. No doubt, he just needs to be able to get the ball. So I took Burks, but if I could have Hollywood on that team and move those three red boxes each down a row, I would feel so much better with this team Um, because I think JSN's coming right in and making a difference, Um, and Justin Jefferson's ridiculous. Sure. And I would have absolutely put Aaron Jones on this team if this was a real draft uh, in that 10th round. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. All right. I'll throw one more stop doing this uh, at the end. Stop using keep trade cut. Uh, or and definitely stop telling me about it or sending me things about it because you go into a website that's free and I get it. It's thousands upon thousands of entries, but like every Jamoke and their mother has to click these four boxes to tell you who to keep trade cut every time you get on the website. I don't give a fuck what those people think. And some of those people are probably just clicking buttons to, to so, you know, there's got to be some sort of skewed numbers on there. Get out of here with your keep trade cut jargon. Casey's I'm glad all. it's a free site. It's nice and all. It's nice that it's free or whatever. And I'm, I, I guess they have a calculator that maybe you have to pay for. Definitely don't send me that. And definitely, definitely don't send me that. Stop with the keep trade cut nonsense. Just pay for somebody who has got some eight DLF has ADP. Other people have ADP. Do just if you're that into dynasty and you need ADP, get it from somebody. DLF's doing six mocks a, a, a month mm-hmm. with real guys, and I'm sure some of those guys are from DLF helping that ADP stay uh, stay up. You Ish. Know, there's there's ADPs yeah. around that right, are, that right. you can at least adjust from. Get out of here with sleep uh, keep trade cut nonsense. Hilarious. <laughs> He's off of it. Get rid of it. All right. We appreciate you guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment below, all that jazz. Um, We are getting to the end here, so I'll hit the end music. Oh, end music coming in a little bit late. We're going to be talking some analytical sides of combine uh fallout rookie rankings kind of deal with a with an analytical guy here and on the next time you see us after this show is posted we're gonna have all sorts of stuff coming up we don't have long until the draft but we're gonna be working real hard to get rookie rankings and then the last piece of the puzzle will be when uh 
the actual draft comes so you can kind of move your guys around we'll be doing the uh industry mock again so we'll get a bunch of names from the industry and have them all have a team we got all sorts of fun stuff coming up tons and tons we're making our own adp we got a tool coming up we got a tool five dollar holler and you can be helping us make adp obviously we're going to throw some out to the public as well to keep that adp as good as it can be so it's not just the same Mm -hmm. you know 50 60 dudes drafting every time a uh, lot of fun there and you can get in all the mocks with us and then you don't need to go to tre- keep trade cut um, Boom. so we appreciate you um, and we will catch you next time peace